Greetings class, welcome to Dual Academy. Professor Rivas here, and today is the second lesson of your first class, Introduction to Monsters. Today we will be discussing the first two types of effect monsters, Continuous and Ignition. So without further ado, get your deck, get your game on, and let's get started. In our last class, we discussed how normal monsters were being used less while effect monsters were being used more. This is because duelists began to realize how much more versatile these effect monsters were as opposed to normal monsters. There are four categories when it comes to the effects of these effect monsters. Continuous effect, ignition effect, quick effect, and trigger effect. Today we will be focusing on the continuous effect and ignition effect. First up is the continuous effect. This effect is active while the effect monster card is face up on the field. The effect starts when the face up monster appears on the field and ends once that monster is gone or is no longer face up. There is no trigger for its activation. These monsters are most useful if you have a strategy to protect them while they are on the field. Jinzo is a perfect example of an effect monster with the continuous effect. Its effect reads, trap cards and their effects on the field cannot be activated negate all trap card effects on the field. This means that as long as Jinzo is face up on the field, whether in attack or defense position, trap cards of both players cannot be activated, and any face up trap cards with any active effects will have their effect negated. Below, we have some characteristics of continuous effects. Continuous effects will not have colons or semicolons. These effects do not activate, therefore cards cannot be activated in response. In other words, it does not start a chain. However, cards that can negate effects that aren't required to be activated are allowed. Let's look at the example of Jinzo again. Let's say your opponent has Jinzo on the field and you would like to negate its effects. If you have Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit and Effect Veiler in your hand, only one of them would be legal to play. Ghost Ogre reads, when a monster on the field activates its effect, or when a spell or trap that is already face up on the field activates its effect, which is a quick effect, you can send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard, destroy that card on the field. You can only use this effect Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit once per turn. Ghost Ogre would be illegal to play because in order for its effect to destroy the monster on the field, that monster would have to activate their effect, and we can't forget that continuous effects technically don't activate. However, Effect Veiler is a different story. Its effect reads, during your opponent's main phase, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard, then target one face-up effect monster your opponent controls. Negate that opponent's face-up monster's effect until the end of this turn. This is a quick effect. Effect Veiler will be able to activate its effect to negate Jinzo's effect, since it does not require the effect monster to activate its effects. Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit and Effect Veiler are both quick effect monsters, and we will discuss these effects next class. Here are some additional examples of continuous effects. First up we have Blade Knight, which is a level 4 light warrior monster. Its effect reads, when you have one or less cards in your hand, this card gains 400 attack. If you control no other monsters, the effect of flip monsters destroyed by battle with this card are negated. Next up we have Steamroid, a level 4 earth machine monster. Its effect reads, if this card attacks an opponent's monster, this card gains 500 attack during the damage step only. If this card is attacked by an opponent's monster, this card loses 500 attack during the damage step only. Once again, you'll notice that neither of these monsters have colons or semicolons in their effects. Remember, these effects technically don't activate, but remain active as long as they're face up on the field. Next up, we have the ignition effect. You use this type of effect just by declaring its activation during your main phase. There are some ignition effects that have a cost to activate, 
like discarding cards from your hand, tributing a monster, or paying life points. Because you can choose when to activate this type of effect, it's easy to create combos with them. The main point of this type of effect is that you choose whether you would like to activate the effect or not. Let's look at Time Wizard. Its effect reads, once per turn, you can toss a coin and call it. If you call it right, destroy all monsters your opponent controls. If you call it wrong, destroy as many monsters you control as possible, and if you do, take damage equal to half the total attack those destroyed monsters had on the field. As you can see, Time Wizard is quite the gamble that can result in either a major advantage or a major disadvantage. However, since it's an ignition effect, you choose whether you'd like to take that gamble or not. Below, we have some characteristics of ignition effects. Ignition effects are classified as Spell Speed 1. They can be activated during your Main Phase 1 or Main Phase 2, but not your opponent's Main Phase 1 or Main Phase 2. Key phrases that indicate ignition effects include once per turn, you can, and during your main phase. Ignition effects may have a cost followed by a semicolon. Here we have some additional examples of ignition effects. First up we have Cyber Gymnast, a level 4 earth warrior monster. Its effect reads, once per turn, you can discard one card then target one face of attack position monster your opponent controls. Destroy that target. We can see that it has the ignition effect indicators of once per turn and you can. It also has a cost of discarding one card. Therefore, in order for the effect of destroying that targeted attack position monster your opponent controls, you must pay the cost of discarding a card, which means sending a card from your hand to the graveyard. Next we have Emma Release, a level 1 earth plant monster. Its effect reads, during your main phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard. You can normal summon one monster this turn for one less tribute. You can only use the effect of Emma Release once per turn. We can see that this card has the ignition effect indicators of during your main phase and you can. It has a cost of banishing this card from the graveyard. Therefore, in order to resolve its effect of normal summoning one monster for one less tribute, you would have to pay the cost of banishing Emma Release from the graveyard, which means removing it from your graveyard and out of play. Please note that if your opponent has a card that would negate the effect of an ignition effect monster, the cost would still have to be paid. This is because the cost is just a requirement for the effect to begin to resolve. A card that negates an effect would only negate the effect, not the cost that has to be paid. Thank you so much for attending this class. There will be a quiz on this lesson, so don't forget to take it. I hope you have a great did it did it day, and class dismissed. <laughs>